Hey folks, welcome to this week's show. This week's show is a very special show. This is our 75th original episode. You know, we've been in the air for almost six years now. This is season six. And uh, we've had a lot of highs and lows over the year that really made us what Trapping Time is today. This week, we're going to share some of our highlights over the last six years. This is Trapping Time. Look who I got out of bed this morning to go check traps. Great where I caught my first guy. It's old seeing those dogs bouncing. This is my story. This is my time. This is Trapping Time. Trapping Time is brought to you by Trapping Girl Incorporated, Night Owl Lures, Old South Lures, Southern Snares and Spot, Smokey's Deer Lure, Webster's Predator Control, Duke Traps, Wolf Creek Products, Sawmill Creek Baits and Lures. I came in here and set this the other day. Everything was froze up except for right here below the bank. So we kind of concentrated everything as far as our leg holds go right here because we know it's going to get cold again and we want to make sure that if any of the ice is up, this running water, they're still going to be able to, to access these traps. Now down below the dam, I set a couple three there. We're going to get our gut gloves on. We're going to walk down here and see what we have. Now, this setup here is very simple. <laughs> we can see where these beavers were coming up on this bank right here. And there was a little shelf here. And we did a standard drowning setting. Now I can see we've got one here. It don't look like a very big one, but we're in here to get rid of all of them. So whatever we get, it's not too bad of a beaver. Well, I have Miss Peyton on a creek with me today. We think Peyton. You just couldn't get out in the deep enough water. Um, we'll call, we'll chalk this one up to operator error. We dispatched him, got him up on the bank, which was pretty cool because you've never seen one alive before, have you? Yeah. Pretty neat. Now this little spot we got here is kind of off the beaten path. There's a well pad here that we got permission to access. A little set up here. And looks like we got us a, a muddy trigger. Like really muddy. Somebody, sometimes you can't even tell what you got. A little red. That's a real nice looking fox. Hurry up, check this line as fast as you possibly can. This is one of those times that it's really not going to hurt my feelings if I don't catch anything. But this is also the time when you always catch something. And we caught something. Pretty little red fox. Put this pretty little red right here in a buried base This is set. A, a, a typical let's call them gimmick sets for lack of better words that I like to put out on a farm. I may be running all dirt holes but I'll throw in something like this or maybe a flat set just to uh, change it up a little anyway, bit. This is just a perfect perfect spot. If you look behind me Justin had this set up on a drag and the beauty of a drag is especially here in the south there's places that it can hang up. This fox got caught and probably 15 feet away before he started disturbing any of the set area. This set this is, looks as good as when Justin put it in. That's the advantage of a drag and a heavy, heavy trap. Now he, his drag's back here, and this is a young gray fox. 
he's probably got I'm gonna say eight foot of chain on here and what's nice about drags you can especially if you're in soil that just will not take an anchor you can show this drag in here let that fox get caught he's gonna take it away from the set and doesn't disturb everything up and you're ready to go again um, pretty little fox we don't have a lot of them up north like they have down here down south but I love catching the grays they're beautiful they're when we come back from the break we're gonna check out some more of our highlights from the last six seasons from the hills of West Virginia Smokey's Deer Lures presents the first and only real pre-orbital gland lure in the world. Applying pre-orbital gland lure to a licking branch will allow you to take a complete inventory of the bucks at your favorite hunting spot. Get yours at SmokiesDeerLure.com Well you see, trappers are a special breed of people. We're dedicated, committed, and passionate about what we do and who we are. Each and every one of us has an intense desire to be the very best we can. So in the world of skinny jeans, man buns, and pumpkin spice lattes, sometimes you just have to stop, push back, and tell the world, that's not me. Whether you're from the far north, or in the deep south, and anywhere in between, Southern Snares can help you succeed at getting the job done and being who you are. This has been a somewhat of a productive day. This little place here has caught me more coyotes and more cats than I don't know what. It's kind of one of them places that when you're trying to put up numbers of coyotes, it's all about speed. You want to be able to get as many sets out as you possibly can, check them from the truck, and move on to the next one. But every so often, you get that one spot that is just worth walking. And this is that spot. But I got a coyote up here. Looks like a pretty good one. He's pretty active, jumping around. Now, folks, this is a pretty coyote. The fur on him looks great. Um, he's not all rubbed up. He's just got a really good color to him. In this part of the country, we don't get that really pretty pale coyote but uh, his fur, it looks really, really good. Now what we got here, we got a gas line that comes up over here. We're out in the middle of the woods. I mean, a lot of you guys are always asking me, how are you guys catching these coyotes in the woods? This is the kind of stuff, it's these travel ways. This is what you gotta focus on when you're trying to catch these coyotes, especially in the woods. Everybody has them in their part of the country. We have gas, everybody's got a gas line. Focus on them, even this, these little ones. This one here is probably not 30, 40 feet wide. But it's big enough that it'll direct these animals through here. Take them to death. Now I tell you what, I've caught a lot of coyotes, but this young dog here has blew this place up. It looks like a grenade went off. In. All right, folks, we're in Mississippi this week, and as you can see, we've got this beautiful lake here. And the property that we're trapping on, you know, we came in here last year and we was focusing on land animals, taking a few beavers out. When we rolled in here this time, the landowner, Sammy, he goes, hey guys, I got some otters. You know, Sammy's got a nice catfish pond and these otters come in here and he will clean these ponds out. Yesterday, I'd made a little, I was using a little Old South Black Bayou Auto Lure and uh, some Webster smoked shellfish. And what I did, I ended up kind of pulling this stuff up, kind of made my own little otter toilet. You know, and a lot of times when you're trapping otters, you know, you're looking for fish scales and you're looking for, you know, places where, they're, where they've used the bathroom. I kind of tried to reproduce that. And I stuck a Duke number four, four coil in here and we set it up on a drowning rig. And we're gonna pull this up. Hopefully we have an otter. Uh-oh, I see the tail. A young otter. A little female. Awesome. We got ourselves an otter here um, and a couple Duke number four footholds. We'll show you the set that we made here when we get down there, but what we got here is a big beaver sleuth. They have this backed up here, and we actually have a pond here on our left-hand side, and when we were in here scouting out, we originally were sent back here by the landowner because they wanted these beavers removed because of the damage that they're causing to the food plots up front. Um, but we found a, a heavy crossover with an otter toilet up here on this levee, 
So what we did is we, we picked this side going down in and we set two Duke number fours back to back. So when he come down off that slide, basically he had to get all four feet over top of two Duke number fours before he could get away. So this trap's been here, I think, I think this is the third day that we've had this. With these otters, it's basically a waiting game, a numbers game. You've got to get traps out and, and a lot of traps and, and it's a lot of waiting, especially this time of the year when the, when the male otters are traveling, looking for females in season and stuff. So we'll go down here and, and take a look at him. He's still alive because we weren't able to actually drown him for all the deeper the, the water is out here. So we'll walk down here and take a look at him. Right. Yeah, we got a nice otter. It actually looks like he's in both of our traps. All right, we're back in the swamp, and I'm actually standing on the crossover where I caught my first otter at. We've been pretty lucky in back in this part of the swamp. We've taken some pretty big beavers, and we're pulling traps today. And uh, tell you what, I got something dancing over here. This trap has been fooled with so many times, and I just kept resetting. And finally, Justin, you know, he got a little more experience with the otters than I do. He Hey, give me a little tip on how to reposition my trap. And uh, this is a real nice otter, real nice otter. I had him on a drowning rig, and obviously he ended up getting up on the bank and getting tangled before he could get down. I'm going to try and get over here. He yanked my T-bar and everything. But we don't figure he's going anywhere. He got wrapped up around this tree. Just a beautiful animal. Duke Traps has the most complete product line of game traps in the world. Check out the full line of body grippers for beaver, raccoon, muskrat, and more. Duke has homeowners covered as well with a full line of standard and heavy-duty live cage traps. Duke has over 30 models of animal control devices that can help you with your trapping needs. Duke now offers the number 550 and larger 650 coil springs, plus their newly developed number 2 Douglas for catching coyotes. Get more information at DukeTraps.com. Duke, America's best trap value. Hey folks, be sure to check out our all-star lineup for the upcoming season. New for 2018 is the hard-hitting Blackout Predator Bait. If you're looking for a beaver-based bait with some kick, this is it. We're also proud to add to the batting order our line of mouse-based baits. If you're looking for a mice bait so pure it's practically eating cheese in the container, then you will want to try Peyton's Pretty Mouse. Maybe you're looking for a bait with some long-range appeal for those cold winter nights, then you've got to try Peyton's Dirty Mouse. When you're serious about trapping predators like we are, then be sure to make your next purchase at TrappingTimeTV.com. Well, it's Christmas Day and I'm checking my line. And I tell you what, you ever got one of them places you just know you're going to catch something in? This is one of those places. I've taken cats and coyotes out through here. It has been dead. I caught one coyote the other day and just, it just doesn't seem to be clicking for me. I don't know what the heck's going on. We got something up here. Aha! Speaking of the devil, caught us a cat. It's a real good looking cat. A little brush pile set I made here, um, right off the edge of this little little road here. Oh yeah, Christmas Day kitty. Heck yeah. Let's get down and take a look and see what we got here. You know, it was actually on this ridge here where the uh, the brush pile set came about. I was coming out the ridge and I'd seen where, well I'd caught a raccoon, I skinned it out threw it down over the hill and uh, a couple days later I'd seen that that raccoon had been moved and when they had moved it it was covered up with a bunch of brush and I seen a cat that had came in and did it and I tell you what it just got me thinking right there you know if they're doing that kind of stuff maybe that could turn that into a set because obviously he was coming back and uh, it ended up working here I had a little bit of a little scrap piece of deer off of Peyton's buck she killed this year and I had it covered up, had it staked down, and as you can see, the stake and everything's still in here. And what's nice about this brush pile set is, it'll stay working. The longer it sets here, the more smells that it's producing. Now, I put a little bit of call lure on here, some Old South 007, and uh, I think that was just enough to get this cat to come off track and get caught. All right, we got us a bobcat here this morning. Where we set this trap is, actually yesterday, Robbie caught a coyote over on this point and back around this point. And I stuck a, a trap here on this roadway that's running from these fields to the fields. 
and this is kind of an outer point in this field. Everything coming down through here is going to hug this corner going around to follow these crop fields. So but we sunk a um, Duke number two square jaw in here and baited it with a new test bait and lure that I'm working on from Webster's Predator Control. Um, I think this is the second day this set's been here. Yesterday you could tell there was a little activity around the set but didn't quite connect and this morning we caught ourselves a nice Mississippi bobcat. So We've got a pocket set right up around here on the bend. And I had a piece of fish in there the other day that got robbed. I'm almost betting. Yep, that's what I thought was taking it. Caught us a pretty nice coon. Now one thing that's going to be nice, he's going to try to get back in that hole where my pocket set was at. One thing that's nice, this will be all tore up so when these mink and stuff come down through here, it'll really attract them to it. We're going to get him out. As you can see, I'll take this stick. If you look right there, that's where my trap was at. And I made it. There was actually a natural hole there. So I didn't really have to do a whole lot of anything for a pocket set. But uh, I did throw a little bit of bait back in the hole and it got stolen the other day. The water had froze up. So the trap didn't fire. You could see where something was out on the ice. I thought it was a raccoon. So we just saved some turkey eggs. Now we got a few DPs out. We're on a small DP line. Well, everybody knows what coon prices are doing this year. But raccoons are one of those animals you still got to keep in check. So, so what uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be setting out the FB1s. We're going to put some different baits in them. Usually when I make a setup, I put uh, two different baits at each location. And it's usually pretty successful for me. We're going to take a walk up here and see what we got. Lucky there. Now we've got a pretty nice coon right here and we've got the FB1, we've got him rigged up on some cable. Now he's got this place kind of tore up here and uh, we're probably not, I don't know, I'm going to say three or four feet off the edge of the stream. But the key here, we're hidden from the road, we can come in, check things out and uh, I actually found my coon cap when I walked in here. A lot of guys will wire these up to their trap, I don't. I like to just let them lay, lay loose. Usually they pop them right off the top and they get kicked out of the way. But uh, this is a very, very handy tool here. But we're going to get this raccoon out here. I'll show you the remake. Another trap right back here. Looks like we have a possum in it. We'll, we'll get it out of there and we'll show the remake on it. Well, we're pulling up here and it's been rainy and muddy. We got a coyote up in this corner up here. This trap set up here for a week. We haven't seen a track number one in this field. But it just seemed like a good location. probably going to have to wait him out. Paul was actually going to catch him when it rained uh, snowed the other night. Why we catch him up here, but we, got, we ended up snagging this one here last night in the rain, and he has got a muddy, muddy mess out. This is just a prime location right here. We've got this big overgrown field, and we got a beautiful hay field up there, and probably a stretch of woods, maybe 15 yards. Wow. Kind of counting on them, working the edges around here. And he did. He it worked out perfect. I mean, exactly what we what we thought was going to happen. Working this edge, and he got caught. Now we took and made a real small dirt hole here, and over there, just a flat set, just something to throw a little bit of variation into him. And he ended up coming up and worked the old dirt hole. We've set this for two years. And I just knew it was a good spot, and just I couldn't catch anything here. And finally, was fortunate enough to to snag one. <clears throat> from the hills of West Virginia. Smokey's Deer Lures presents the first and only real pre-orbital gland lure in the world. Applying pre-orbital gland lure to a licking branch will allow you to take a complete inventory of the bucks at your favorite hunting spot. Get yours at SmokeysDeerLure.com Well you see, trappers are a special breed of people. We're dedicated, committed, and passionate about what we do and who we are. Each and every one of us has an intense desire to be the very best we can. So in a world of skinny jeans, man buns, and pumpkin spice lattes, sometimes you just have to stop, push back, and tell the world, that's not me. Whether you're from the far north or in the deep south and anywhere in between, Southern Snares can help you succeed at getting the job done and being who you are. We found a few holes down through here, but truthfully, I don't think uh, I don't think they're they're super active holes. I think they're holes that they may use every once in a while, but I don't think they're they're actually denning in them. But uh, 
we just took some muskrat lure and set it up there in the bank so when they came in they had to come up onto the trap and down and we got a decent rat here now I used a fiberglass stake here because the banks were so muddy I was able to push it down really really deep but we got us a nice decent sized rat about what we've been getting got a good back leg catch he uh, probably didn't take me very long time he got out there and uh, the water got got the best of him but we're gonna remake this set and just these simple sets just remember as simple as we can keep it the better we're in mississippi and i'm checking justin rogers traps for today he's the uh, president of his local nwtf chapter and our banquet tonight so he needed the whole day to uh, get everything ready for it but uh this is a nice nice coyote um, a lot of the coyotes we're getting into on this farm were really really young and this one here prime example of that what we have we have a railroad spur that runs parallel to this field there's a crossover right here and it was just screaming coyotes said these coyotes it's easier for them to stay on these roads and get from field to field um two different types of terrain on the other side we've been pretty putting pretty well putting hurting on the coyotes and we even caught a cat over there so it was just a matter of time before this side started hitting as well well deer season has just concluded and <clears throat> it's getting dark on me but i'm running a decent little line i got hit by a briar nasty <laughs> but uh looks like i got a pretty good dog up here this little point right here it kind of drops off comes out of ridge and just kind of drops off into this big field and when i'm bow hunting i always hear dogs out here and i just had a feeling it'd be a good spot to uh to set a trap oh let's get down here and check it out Robbie Gilbert, king of the poor man's double. Did you happen to see that possum right there? We're in our, in our creek crossing on our farm across the creek. You can see it's kind of washed over the creek's real high. I had a uh, 330 son of bear duke right here. You know, eyes and beavers are coming right through here. They go either side and look at that current right here. So I set my trap to it. So I couldn't find it. I've been looking and I see it. I know the current washed him up, but he's buried over here. He's buried over here against the bank. Pretty good size flat fish. I had it on the stakealizer in the middle of the creek, and he was able to he was able to pull it up. You can see it's a pretty good size fish. All right, we thought we'd come in from a different direction on this field here today and it poured rain down last night. Now this field was pretty good to us the other day. We connected on a pretty good dog. Uh, we're going on about a week with these sets out. So we've taken one so far and I've got a dirt hole and a flat set up and we got a coyote. That's a pretty good looking dog. I actually caught it <clears throat> in the remake. That coyote we caught the other day, he had tore that place up and we had to really work at it to get the remake on it. So we're gonna pull up here a little closer to him We'll get out and remake this set and hopefully we can uh, get this set remade because i always say anytime you catch one there's always a good chance you're gonna catch another that 175 is holding him tight he's not going anywhere hot dog hey folks i really hope you enjoyed this week's show as much as we did bring it to you 75 episodes hard to believe you know when we started this show six years ago who would ever thought we'd be this far along and still going strong we want to give a big shout out to you the fans because you're the reason that we're here and keeps us pushing forward every season to make Trapping Time one of the best shows on national television. Be sure to join us next week for another exciting adventure of Trapping Time. And remember, like we always say, we're keeping the tradition alive here at Trapping Time.